Hi, in this Excel tutorial, we'll go over how to use sparklines in Excel. First, what is a sparkline? So all a sparkline is, is a mini chart that shows how the data in a row or column is trending. They also look very smart and can help make a spreadsheet look more professional. And by the way, if you enjoy this tutorial, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for even more tips. On my screen are sales results for our associates by month. We can use sparklines to get a quick idea of how each associate's performance is trending. To do this, go to the Insert tab, and in the Sparkline section, you'll see we have three different chart types to choose from. We can do a line chart, column chart, or win-loss charts. You can also highlight the data that you want to chart, and then click on this icon on the bottom right and select Sparklines from here. Let's start with a line chart. So our data range is already selected, and then we just need to set the location where we want our sparkline to be. So we'll just set it right next to the data. And FYI, you could select all of your data together and insert sparklines for all of them by selecting a location for each of the sparklines, and this would group them all together, just as it is here. Let's undo this, and we'll come back to the difference between a group and an individual sparkline in a little bit. So once a sparkline is created, you should see a sparkline tools menu that you can use to redesign your sparklines if you so desire. This will show up whenever you select the cell containing a sparkline. So if I leave the sparkline, the options go away. But if I go back to it, my sparkline tools return. You can use this menu to revise things such as the data range and the location of your sparkline if you want to. You can also change the type of sparkline so you can quickly switch from column to win loss and let's go back to line. So here where it says show, this refers to the markers in your sparkline. So for example, you can decide to show a marker on the high point and you'll also see it here in the style menu. As that updates, you can choose a marker on the low point, negative points if we have any, which we don't, first point, last point, or you could choose to show all of your markers. Here in the style section, you can quickly change the color of your sparkline based on colors that match your existing color palette, or you can decide on one of these colors or select your own custom color for your sparkline. Likewise, you can change the color used for your marker. So you can do each one individually, or you can decide to change them all together. Before we go on to the Axis dropdown, let's talk about grouping your sparklines together and not. So right now we have one sparkline just for this first row. If we were just to copy them down or create sparklines for each one, each one will be individual. So for example, if we back in the design tab, if we select to change the column, we've only changed the column type for that first spark line. And that applies to any of this other formatting we can do. So let's undo this. If we were to select the entire range or just drag this down, you see that now all of the spark lines are part of the same group. So that means that any of these design changes, whether chart type, markers, colors, or axis changes, will apply to all of the sparklines, not just to one sparkline at a time. Now, in addition, you can always ungroup them just by selecting the ungroup button here, and this will make it so that the sparkline is now independent of the other sparklines. Okay, so I actually prefer to group these together again before going over the axis dropdown. And to do that, just click on group up here in the group section and notice how they took on the formatting of the chart at the top. And so now they're all columns. So here in the axis dropdown, you have a few options. Each sparkline is formatted as a general axis type, meaning that you see a data point reflected in the chart for each data point in your data range. You can also set it to reference a date axis type. What this means is that if you have a date range, like I do up here, you can select this, click OK, and now you see each data point reflected by the date. So for example, these gaps reflect the gap between March and June, so there's a gap for what would have otherwise been April and May. 
You can also show the axis, change the direction of your data. Here in the vertical axis minimum and maximum values, we can set how our axis is set for the spark line. So what that means is right now each axis is set based on the data in each row, not on the data for the entire data range together to make them seem more even. So what you can do, and let's make this bigger so you can see better what's happening. If you select same for all spark lines, notice how each data point in the chart changes its location slightly. And that's because now all the data points are taken into consideration the full data, not just the one for that specific associate. You can also set your own custom value for the axis. Know that that's an option here. We're not going to be doing that. So if you decide you want to get rid of a spark line, uh, you can come up here to the clear and either select a specific spark line or you can select to get rid of the entire group. And let's undo this. You can also just select your column and choose delete, but we're not going to delete that right now. Another thing you can do with spark lines is you can insert them using column data. So it doesn't always have to be row data or left to right. So you can insert a spark line selecting a data range in a column, and that will create a spark line for your column data. So one last thing to keep in mind as you're designing your spreadsheets using spark lines is under location. Typically, you see spark lines located adjacent to the data that they're referencing, but this doesn't have to be the case. So for example, I can insert a spark line and have it be anywhere on this worksheet and it'll still reference that data. What I'm not able to do is I'm not able to insert a spark line outside of this active worksheet. Notice how I get an error when I try to go on to a different tab. I'm also not able to copy a spark line and paste it outside of this worksheet. What I am able to do is move them out of this worksheet using the cut feature and then pasting them in their new location and they'll still reference the original source data. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to use spark lines in Microsoft Excel. If you did, please make sure to like the video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.